okay so today it's a very new topic so we are uh, uh, done with uh, the collection framework right uh, today we are going to start the string manipulations and this is very 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 important topic guys please uh, stay focused so usually I, I i always say that every topic is important but when i say when i stress much it, it means you know you get some interview questions out of that particular topic so string manipulations and uh, on top of uh, java strings you can expect a lot of interview questions and those interview questions can be very tricky guys tricky okay tricky as well as and when you know the concept it is going to be easy like when you don't when you not know the concept the questions are going to be little tricky but when you know you can play with the questions so let us directly jump into the topic string manipulations okay. the first question could be right what are what is a string in java what is a string in java so you can have uh, any number of answers each and every person is going to uh, give one answer for the particular question what is a string in java so everyone knows one common answer the common answer is string is a sequence of characters common answer this answer is making a lot of sense isn't it string is what string is a sequence of characters any characters it is in a, the form of sequence for example a b c d a b c d is a string right and uh, a b c d so whatever it is when, when there are some characters in a particular sequence okay they are called as what string so we have been discussing about java strings already but we are going to today discuss uh, the internal things of java strings also okay. string is a sequence of character enclosed okay this is very important enclosed with double quote double quotes okay string is a sequence of characters enclosed with double quotes syntax okay let us forget about the syntax so this is the first answer okay and uh, we keep building the answers uh, while, while we are discussing about the internal things okay the second uh, the second point that i can write it over here is this is the first point second point i can write it over is uh, string is a class is an inbuilt class inbuilt class inbuilt java class that is available in the available in the java dot lang package there is a package called java dot lang package inside this package you can see the string class that is an inbuilt class so you are not going to design it it is designed already it is designed already by the java people we are just going to use the string class right and you must understand that in in any for example in any, in any java application for example uh, if you have any java application right, the java application has uh, one 1000 lines of code or if the java application has 1000 objects okay and uh, out of this 1000 object more than 900 object more than 900 objects are string or string objects So now look at the importance. If you generate 1,000 objects in a Java application, 9,000 more than more than 900 objects are going to be of string type, and the remaining, okay, the remaining 100 or less than or equal to 100 objects are going to be what the remaining objects. So you need to understand a lot about Java strings because everywhere you will use string, you will use Java strings, right? And uh, let's go back to the point. We have, we have two points here. I have uh, just uh, written down two points here. Okay, the third point is this keyword is very very important. String is immutable. Immutable in nature. Okay, remember this keyword always. String is immutable. What is immutable? When I say something is immutable, it is not changeable. Okay, it is not changeable. So when you create an object for a particular thing, for example, 
So these are the three points for Java string. So what is a Java string? You can answer these three points. And the follow up question is what is immutable? What is immutability? Let me give you the small example. Okay. So I want to uh, create an object by using the string class guys. So by using string class, I want to do what? I want to create an object. String s equal to new string. Right? I hope this is visible. String s equal to new string. And I am creating a string like uh, let us take the string itself as Java. So Java is my string. Okay. I want to create a string object. So string object has been created with the new keyword. I want to perform, I want to do some, I want to uh, do some concatenation. Right? By using this reference variable, there is a method called concat method. So whenever you are calling the concat method on top of a reference variable, on top of the string reference variable, it means you can, this concat method is going to accept another string. You can pass any other value like language, this language. Okay, so this is going to perform what concatenation, the Java becomes Java language. Right? And after this, I am I want to use a statement like system dot out dot print again. I want to print the reference variable of string itself. Okay, so we are discussing about string. So let me write the heading here. We are discussing about. Okay, when I do this, so what are the things that is going to happen behind the scenes? Okay. I need your attention here. So you are creating an object. Okay, since the new keyword has been used because of this new keyword an object will be created yes or no behind the scenes an object will be created and this object is going to have a reference variable as what yes right and uh, you are going to store java right the first line is completed the first line is completed and the second line second line says and you are concatting, you are con you are using the concat method to concat the another string which is language. Language is another string. Okay? So you are concatenating Java with language so that it becomes Java language. Right? But the concatenation will not happen in the same object. The concatenation will, will never happen in the same object. Okay? This is how we uh, usually think right the concatenation is going to happen in the same object but it will not happen in the same object what happens instead again a new object will be created again a new object will be created this s reference variable is holding what this s reference variable is holding a value called java okay. this java will be concatenated with the string that you are passing inside the concat method which is what language Okay, so here we are going to use what Java plus language. Okay, after the concatenation, everything is going to become as what Java language. Okay, so the result is going to be as Java language. So here the idea here is here the conclusion is very simple, guys. Whatever the operation that you are trying to perform, you cannot perform the operation on the existing object. Once the object is created, it is created. You cannot even touch that object. Okay. So, an object has been created. In the very first line, the object has been created. Once it is created, so this is the object creation. Object has been created successfully. Once the object is created, you cannot even touch that. You cannot even make any changes to that, to the created object you want to do any changes that changes can be done on the new object only so this is the, this is a kind of change okay you are expecting what you are trying to use the first string and uh, by using the concat method you want to concatenate the first string with the second string which is language that operation can happen 
in the new object right so every time every time the string class is going to create what every time a new object will be created every time a new object will be created right and that's why it is immutable in nature okay that's why strings are immutable once the object is created you cannot even do make any change you cannot even touch this object right if you are if you want to make any changes on top of this object you can make you can process the changes but the changes can be done after creating the new object so this is how the string class works okay so immutability is what it cannot be changed so once the object is created it cannot be modified and if there are any changes it will happen the new object the new object creation will happen the changes will happen in the new object existing object will never be touched so this is what this is what we call it as what immutability okay so string so are always immutable in nature so there is the opposite concept okay there is a concept called what is a string buffer in java string buffer buffer in java okay, there is a concept called string buffer so we have we are just discussing about string so just like the string not exactly similar there is also a concept called string buffer in java so when you want to speak something about string buffer so i can copy all these three lines so string buffer string buffer we do not want to deal with this the okay, first point string buffer is also is an inbuilt java class that is available in java dot lang lang package the second major point about the string buffer is string buffer is mutable in nature not immutable string buffer is what mutable in nature mutable in nature right now you see the difference you see the exact difference so i want to do something i want to explain you something about the string buffer so i am taking string buffer as b equal to new string buffer i am creating an object by using this string buffer class and i want to uh, take this same string here java right the second line is going to be sp sp dot there is a method called append method so in the string the method called there is a method called concat method but whereas in the string buffer you have a method called append method both the methods are going to do the same job they are going to combine the two strings okay, i want to uh, combine the java with the language okay system dot outer print ln if i try to print sp if i try to print sp what is output if i try to print s here what was the what is output that we are going to get we are going to get the output as only java because we are trying to print the reference i mean the value that is inside s so s is holding the value java so java will be another concept if i do the same thing here okay you get something some other thing in the concept what exactly happens behind the scenes we will understand okay first line that starts from the beginning we'll start from the beginning the first line the first line says string buffer object is created because of this new keyword right and uh, object will be created and this object will be named as and the reference variable is going to be what sb right inside this java will be stored right the second line what you are doing with the second line you are using an append method and you are trying to append java with the string literal language right so this happens okay this changes will happen in the same object itself a new object will never be created within the same object the append okay the appending will happen in the same within the same object so java plus 
language okay, when you conquer, when you append this java plus language it becomes what java language okay, this java will be changed to what java language because you are concatenating two strings java language okay, what is the third line that you are trying to do what is the third line as the third line does it will print the value inside the reference variable as what is the value that is inside the reference variable sp java language so java language will be the concern okay so the only one difference is strings are immutable in nature it cannot be changed once the object is created okay they are just created we cannot make any changes but string buffer is mutable in nature completely opposite just remember just try to you know uh, remember these two words get acquainted with these two words immutable and mutable okay when they are asking you a question what is immutable and what is mutable and you have the answers now right what is mutable okay mutable it can be changed once the object is created it can be modified and uh, this is the answer okay so when someone is asking you what is a string and what is a string buffer difference between string and string buffer you have the answers now string is immutable in nature string buffer is mutable in nature mutable in nature okay they both are inside the java.lang package right and we are going to see a lot of difference between string and string buffer okay we keep adding the points while we looking into the core concepts Right, this is the first first program and the question in the interior room could be they will ask you okay they say there is a string s equal to new string okay they pass java yeah and uh, what they do they usually do what s dot concat and they pass language right and they will ask you what what would be the output for this following code what would be the output for this following code okay. so this is the case one if i run this code the output is going to be what java why java because uh, we have just discussed okay the first line is going to create new object and second line is going to create another new object and uh, you are just calling the reference variable of the first of uh, reference variable of yes so the value inside the reference variable yes is java itself so that's why java is getting displayed in the console okay. what if i do this what if i say s equal to s dot contact case two case two let us understand this case two okay if i run this code we will get uh, java language why you are getting java language let us understand this focus here so this is case one this is case two each and every line we will try to understand each and every line okay ideally the case two is also let us start executing from the beginning okay the first line is object creation so an object will be created this object will have the reference variable as what yes okay and uh, java you are passing java so this object is going to store the value java right and this s is assigned to this object right let's focus on the second line second line there are two sides right hand side and the left hand side left, right hand side and the left hand side what you are doing you are using a concat method concat method is what concatenation okay so java and the language will be concatenated java as java language right and uh, every time string is going to create a new object right after concatenation what you are trying to do you are assigning you are reassigning the s reference variable to the newly created object so this s is now reassigned okay. previously this was uh, belonged to this object now the s has been reassigned to this uh, newly created object because you are assigning s after uh, making changes those changes are assigned to the yes itself right a new object is created changes are done okay and these changes 
in the new object is assigned to the existing assets so there was a change previously the s was here now the previously s was assigned to this object and now you are reassigning this as to this object right and what is the third line you are trying to print the value inside yes so what is the value inside the reference variable as java language java language has to get displayed in the console that is what we got in the console java language Okay, these are the two important cases okay and we will understand the cases with respect to string buffer string buffer sb equal to new string buffer okay and uh, i want to pass same java right so sb dot i am using append method so string buffer as a method called append method to combine two strings or to uh, concatenate to uh, to append two strings. So I want to append uh, an another string for language. Okay. If I try to print uh, system dot out dot uh, printer, uh, and if I try to print the reference variable sp, so this is the case one. Okay. String, buff string buffer is mutable in nature, so. The changes will happen in the existing object itself. The new object will not be created. Okay, the first line has created one object, right? The second line is going to do what? Append this first and the second step. Okay, the Java and the language. So the these changes will happen in the existing object itself. In the existing memory itself, the changes will happen. Okay, after these changes, what you are trying to do? You are trying to print the reference variable SP. Okay, the newly changed value is going to get displayed at the console, which is Java language. If I run this code, I should get Java language the console. Right? If I do if I do reassigning, if I don't do re reassigning, it will not have any big impact. Reassigning is not happening here. Because already the object is pointing to the same, already the reference variable is pointing to the same object. So there is no uh, it will not make any sense if I try to do this reassignation. That's why you're getting error here. Right. So this is the uh, string buffer. Okay. So what are the difference that you can say? Very simple. Remember this immutable and mutable. Okay. Strings are immutable in nature. String buffer is mutable in nature. Right. And uh, now these are the valid points that you have just discussed along with the program. Right. Let us jump into the next section. Next session, the case two. Okay. Let, let us see something about. Okay, this is also an important interview question. Okay, this question needs to be understood really well. The difference between double equal to operator and the equals method. Difference between double equal to operator and the equals method. So equals method is in the object class okay this is how it looks like okay i will introduce you some more cases all these questions are interview questions okay so they will ask you to find the output they the questions would be like this guys they give the question like this and they ask you to find the output guess the output so you need to guess the output okay now the remaining cases we will discuss okay the difference between Double equal to operator equals method. Okay. Now uh, this is one of the popular interview question. So every time this question will be asked, especially for the pressures. Even for the experienced candidates, this question will often they will often ask this question. Okay. They will try to understand how how good you are at Java strings. Okay, the question is like this they say string s1 equal to new string java and there will be what string s2 equal to new string and again java right string s1 equal to new string and string s2 equal to new string. okay before even understand this question i want to understand something here Okay, so whenever you are creating an object by using the string class, focus here guys, whenever you are creating an object by using the string class, behind the scenes, 
behind the scenes the memory will get allocated in two areas let me repeat this one line will do so many things behind the scenes right so behind the scenes there are two memory areas one memory area is what the heap area frame of the memory area is heap area second one is what the scp area scp is an acronym for print constant okay. okay so this line will do so many things behind the scenes okay there are two memory areas that we need to remember one is the heap area okay. second one is what this scp area string constants okay actually you are doing you are using the new keyword case so you see what you are using new keyword okay because of this new keyword an object will be created in the heap area try to understand this because of this new keyword an object will be created in the heap area at the same time this object will have the reference variable as s1 right so new keyword is doing this right this and after doing this you are passing the string as what java the java string will be stored inside this created object inside the newly created object the value java will be stored right and so okay this is the first part okay there are two parts this is the first part okay this is what first part the second part is second part is this particular java literal okay you call this as what literal java literal so you are passing this literal to a constructor so this part is called as what constructor right so you are passing the literal to the constructor so this constructor is called as what i mean this the value that you are passing is called as what literal so for this literal part okay so for this literal part and again an object will be created right and it is going to store java in the string constant okay this one line of code has to be too many I mean it is going to do two things first thing is an object the complete object will get created in the heap area and it is going to have the actual reference which is s1 for the future purpose okay, for the future purpose what is that future purpose it is for the future purpose blindly it will store the literal it will store the literal in the string constant just try to remember this so this line of code is doing too many two things behind the scenes and uh, object is getting created in the actual object is getting created in the heap area and for the future purpose for the future reference okay an object will also be created in the string constant code these two are the memory areas behind the scenes in the in the computer right so let us discuss one more case okay now now there could be like so this, uh, this is another example let us say that string s1 equal to new string i want to take the string as ratna Right? and string s2 equal to again i want to take that focus here okay so i have two instructions here so this is the first instruction whenever you encounter this instruction whenever you encounter this object creation instruction particularly for the java string right you need to remember two operations okay, just keep in mind you need to remember how many operations two operations okay one is Okay. and take pen and paper and uh, try to observe there are two areas one is the heap area second one is what scp area blindly write this by taking a pen and paper scp is called a string constant constant right so because of this new keyword always a new object will be created in the heap area and s1 the reference variable is s1 will be assigned right and the value ratna will be stored right so whenever you are creating a string by using the new keyword so first part has to be completed and the second part is what 
if for the future purpose java jbm will I mean java will create another object in the scp area and the same ratna value will be stored here for the future purpose and there will be no explicit reference variable here it blindly it is going to store another ratna for the future usage right now let us come to the second line second line i am directly directly assigning the value ratna to the reference variable s2 yes or no when i do this okay second variable is always meant for please please try to focus here second variable is i mean second line of code is always meant to do store object in the scp area always the object will be stored in the scp area okay if there is any existing object with the value ratna the scp area it will not create any object okay the reference variable will be assigned as s2 that's it Okay, let me let me show you few more examples. Let me show you few more examples. Don't uh, no, come to a conclusion that you are not understanding. The third example is I want to take string S1 equal to Jyoti. Okay, I want to take string S2 equal to Jyoti. Okay, I am taking the same values just to make you understand that what is exactly happening behind this. Okay, so because of this. Every time when you are dealing with string, there will be two area states. One is what? Blindly take pen and paper and write in area is heap area. Second one is SCP. SCP stands for string constants. Okay. So whenever you are assigning the literal directly to the string, okay, you are not using new keyword here. You are not using new keyword at all. Okay. So when you are not using new keyword, directly the value will be stored in the SCP area only. Right. So an object will be created in the SCP area, and this object is going to hold the value Jyoti. Okay, and there is what is a reference variable that you have assigned? S1 is a reference variable. S1 will be assigned to this created object. The okay, first line is done. Okay, what is the second line? Second line is also directly assigning the value Jyoti to the S2. You are not using new keyword. Whenever you are not using new keyword. Blindly, this value will be stored in the SCP area, right? Firstly, it will check. Firstly, JVM will check: Is there any object with the value Jyoti? There is already an object created for the value Jyoti, so it will not create new object at all. It will utilize the existing object that is already there. Okay, so this is going to be what? Yes, because Jyoti, right? So this is going to be what is two. So these two objects are pointing to the same reference. Are understanding? One more example is. Okay, one more example we see. Now, if you see string, uh, this is another example. This string S one. I am using new keyword. String S one equal to new string. I want to pass Java. If you are learning Java, let us stick to Java itself because only four letters is very easy. I am taking another string, string S2 equal to new string, okay, Java. Okay, I want to take uh, two more lines, two more lines of code. String S3 is also equal to Java. String S4 is also equal to. So total how many lines of code? I have four lines of code. What we, what is my actual purpose? What is my actual understand? To understand the difference between. Now these two strings and these two strings. Let us understand line by line. First line. So whenever you are uh, storing a string by using the new keyword, okay, please keep. You need to do two things. Behind the scenes, there will be two things. Okay, and uh, what you have to do, you need to write down. Take pen and paper and write what segregate the areas. Okay, one is heap area, second one is what string constant code. Okay, we will discuss what is SCP, what is heap in detail. Don't worry about that. Try to understand how these things are, uh, you know, getting these values are getting stored behind the scenes, right? And because uh, okay, because of this new keyword, an object will be created, right? And this object is going to have the uh, reference variable as S one. Right and uh, let me refer this and the value is going to be Java. Right. So part one then. Part two, what Java is going to do for the future purpose? 
an object will be created and it is going to store the value this will happen only when you use what when you use when you create a string object by using the new keyword okay this this session has been done this first line has been done first line has been done you know second instruction second instruction again the second instruction okay you are using the new keyword isn't it you're using the new keyword okay for this new keyword okay, you need to do two actions Action number one and two. Okay, because of the new keyword, okay, string is uh, immutable in nature, right? So new object will be created. This object, this time the reference variable is what S2. Right? And uh, what is the value that you are going to store? Again, the same Java. Right? So part one is done. Okay. First, this has been completed. Second thing is what? For the future's purpose, it will store, it will create a new object and it will show the value Java. But before doing that, it will try to identify is there any object that is already created by the value Java? Yes, there is an object that is already created by the value Java. So it will not get created for the second time. It will reuse the same object. Reusability will happen here. Okay, reusability will happen. So every time object creation is not mandatory in the SCP area. When, when the object is already there, okay, it will not create a new object in the SCP area. It is going to what? Use, reuse the existing object. Right? Second line is also, I mean, this is also done. Okay? You are not creating it because already there is an object of word Java. So that will be reused. Okay, now go to the third line. Third line is you are directly assigning the string literal to S3 guys, right? So when you are directing assigning string literal to the uh, reference variable, directly it will you know, deal with the SCP area only. Like it will not deal with the heap area, right? It will check is there any object Java? Yes, there is an object called Java, okay? And what is the reference variable that you have? S3, okay? So S3 will be assigned to this Java. Okay, now the fourth line. Fourth line is also you are doing what? You are directly assigning the string literal to your reference variable as four. Okay, it will deal with the SCP area only because the string literal is directly getting assigned to the reference variable. It will check is there any is there any object by the value Java? There is an object by the value Java. It will reuse that. So SCP area is always meant for reusability. Okay, and all these string literals, all these string literals will utilize the SAP area. When I say string literals, this part is talking about the string literals. This will always utilize the SAP area. But all these string objects that are created by using the new keyword, it will use, utilize both EAP area as well as SAP area. Are you understanding till now? Want me to explain with another example? Are we good so far? Are you able to follow what is happening behind the scenes? You want me to explain any other example? If so, you can ask me directly. You will deal with another example also. Can we cal shall we see another example? Yes? No? Ah, now you see the uh, next example. Okay, now you see string. I am taking string S1 equal to Java. Okay, let me copy and paste it. So I am taking five strings. String S1, string S2 equal to Java, string S3 equal to Java, string S4 equal to Java, string S5 equal to Java. So I am directly assigning the string literal to the reference variable. I am not using, I am not creating an object, string object by using the new keyword. Directly assigning the ref the string literal to the reference variable okay every time just try to take pen and paper and uh, separate the areas okay just assume that there is an area called heap area there is an area called scp area okay there is an area called heap area there is an area called what scp area right so this is a literal right literal when you talk about literal always the object will be stored in the scp area so never forget this literal 
always goes to SCP again. And what is the value that you want to store Java? An object will be created, value Java will be stored inside this object. Right? What is a reference variable? S1 is a reference variable, S1 will be pointing to this object. Right? Second line. Again, literal. Literal means the CP area. Again, you are storing Java. Okay, before even creating a new object, it will try to find is there any object with the value Java? Already there is an object with the value Java. So it will not create new object, it will reuse this. SCP is meant for reusability. Always SCP is meant for what? Reusability, reusing the existing object. So that you can save memory, right? So S2 will also be referring to this. Right? And again S3. S3 is also literal. Literal means SCP. Okay, the value is Java itself. So Java means already it is there that will be reused. So S3 will be pointing here. Again S4. S4 is a literal. Literal means SCP area. Right? SCP means already Java is there. So S4 will also be pointing to here. The last one is what? S5. S5 is also literal. SCP area, literal means SCP area. So S5 will also be pointing to which is going to reuse the existing object. Okay. Now the interview question could be how the interview question would be drafted between the double equal to operator and the equal to and dot equals, I mean equals method. The interview question would be like this is very very popular interview question. So string s1 equal to new string. Okay, I am taking uh, the uh, string. Uh, uh, I am creating an object by using this string. Okay, I want to pass uh, Java here. Okay, and I want to pass Java. Okay, and what I want to do it next time is system dot out dot print right? Uh, S1 double equal to S2 and system dot out dot print right? S1 dot equals. So here I am using the double equal to operator for the comparison. I am using what? I am using the double equal to operator for the comparison. Here I am using the dot equals method for the comparison. Here they will ask you what, what is the expected output? What is the output that you can expect when you run this code? Is there anyone who can give answer to this? Or else shall I, shall I proceed with the explanation? No worries, let me uh, directly jump into the explanation. Let me run this code. I am getting false and true. So this is giving me false. Okay, and this is giving me what? This is giving me true. So why this is giving me false? Why this is giving me true? We will understand it. Okay, let me take this piece of code into the paint screen. Really quick. Okay, this is our code. We will do the same thing. We will do the same thing that we have that we have been doing. Okay. So separate, I mean, uh, you know, make two areas. One is for if, allocate two areas, only for one is for, one is for if area, second one is for SCP area. First line. First line says string S1 equal to new string. Okay, whenever you are encountering the new keyword on top of string class. We need to remember what we need to do two things. Don't forget to do two things. Okay. Second thing, this is the first thing. Okay, what is the first thing? Because of this uh, new keyword, a new object will be created. Yes or no? New object will be created, and this new object is going to have the reference variable as what? S1. Right? S1 is going to be the reference variable for the new object, and the value Java will be stored. Right, and uh, you we have completed this. What is the second thing? And even in the SCP area, object will be created for the future purpose. This is not going to have any reference, but the value will be there. 
same Java will be there. So we are done with the first line. Okay, let us deal with the second line. Second line is also the same thing. You are using the new keyword, right? Two operations because of the new keyword in the heap area, an object will be created, and this is going to be what is two. Right, and this is going to store Java. It's two parts, right? For the for this line, you need to think about uh, the object will be stored in two parts. I mean, in two areas. One is heap area, and in the SEP area, already there is Java. Right, it will not create another object. It is going to be com. Right. Now look at the third line. Third line says you are using, you are trying to do your compare. You are comparing S one with S two. Double equal to operator. This is double equal to operator. This is always meant for the reference comparison or address comparison. Reference comparison or address comparison. Right? For example, now I am trying to compare S1 and S2 by using double equal to operator. Okay, S1 is here and S2 is here. If this S1 and this S2, they both are pointing to different objects. S1 is pointing to this particular object. S2 is pointing to this particular object. Both are pointing to different objects. Or I can say that both are pointing to different references. Or both are having different addresses. Right? So the output is going to be what? False. Both are having different addresses. The output is going to be false. Very simple, okay. Don't get any confused. If I have two objects, right? Let us say that this is uh, this object. The address of this object is A. Let us say that the address object uh, address of this object is A. Let us say that the address of this object is B. So if I use double equal to operator, if I if I ask you A double equal to B, okay? If both the objects are pointing to the same address, it means it is going to turn true. Both the objects are pointing to different address. It means it will turn false. Right. Another example is right. The same thing. Okay. If I have uh, if I have one object, if I have uh, two references pointing to this object, so I have A and uh, I have B. So if I call A double equal to B, if I call A double equal to. Okay. A and B both are pointing to the same address. Both are referring to the same object. In this case, it will print. True. Are you getting this? If both the references are pointing to or holding to one object or pointing to the same object, you will get true when you use double equal to operator. If they are pointing to different objects, you will get false. Same thing is happening here. You are, you are using double equal to operator and you are comparing the reference variable S1 and S2 by using double equal to operator. Both are having its own references, so it will return false. That's why we got output as false. At the last line, last line you are using dot equals method. Dot equals method is meant for what? Content comparison. Equals method is meant for, especially for string. The equals method is meant for what? Content comparison. Okay. So you are using S1 dot equals S2. Okay. The content of S1 will be checked with content of S2. Both the content are same. So the output is going to be true. So that's why you got in the console what? Okay, for this you are getting output as false, for this you are getting output as true. In order to understand this, you must understand how the memory is getting allocated behind the scenes. Okay, this is one of the few cases that uh, we have just discussed, one of the few cases. Right? So let me write another code and let me write another code. So I want to write a string S3 equal to Java okay. string S4 is also equal to Java. Now, what I want to do it here is some dot out dot until I want to compare S3 double equal to S4, right? And I also want to compare S1 double equal to S2, right? And I also want to compare. Uh, S1 dot equals S4 or S3. 
plus 3 will tell so if i ask you to uh, you know give me the answers for this question you will find it very difficult in the beginning if i run this code the output is going to be somewhat uh, different see what you are getting you are getting true false true why we are getting true false true shall we try to debug this true false now focus this uh, debugging you will you, all your questions will be answered all your questions that you are having in your mind will be answered because of this particular concept we will understand line by line ok make two, two areas one is heap area second one is what string constant SCP. right so the first first line will create an object because of the new keyword an object will be created and this is going to be what say this object java will be stored and the reference variable is named as s1 right and this and the second part is what uh, you know for the future purpose and another object will be created this is going to store java itself okay first line is done this line is done a second line second line is to new keyword because of this new keyword an object will be created and uh, the value is going to be what java right and this object is uh, addressed with mean, the reference variable for this object is what s2 right and the second part second part is what for the future reference and the same java will be created in the scp area but in the scp area there is already another object so this will be reused so no new object will be created in the scp area. already one object is there with the java Second line is also completed. Okay, third line. Third line, Java literal is getting assigned to S3. Whenever you are dealing with Java literal, directly jump to SCP. It will check is there any existing literal Java here. There is already Java here. So this will get the reference variable as what S3. Right? So third line is also done. Fourth line, again literal. Literal is getting directly assigned, assigned to the reference variable. So Java is already there in the SCP area. So the reference variable S4 will be one. Okay. Fourth line is also fifth line. Fifth line, what we are doing, we are using double equal to operator. Remember, double equal to operator is meant for reference comparison. S3 double equal double equal to S4. So we are trying to check if both the uh, references are pointing towards the same object. Okay. Where is S3? S3 is here. There is S4, S4 is here. Both are pointing to the same reference. Right? So that's why you get output as what? Okay. This is uh, next uh, the next line. Now you are trying to use the double equal to operator between S1 double equal to S2. So where is S1? S1 is here, S2 is here. Both are pointing to different, both as different addresses. So the output has to be what false. Okay, the last line. Last line is what? S1 dot equals S3. Where is S1? We are using dot equals. Dot equals means S1 is here. What is content comparison? Java and S3 is here. S3 is here. Content comparison. Both the contents are same. So output is true. Dot equals means content comparison. Double equal to means reference comparison. That's why you got output as true false. This is also an interview question. Right? You need uh, this understanding to answer this interview question. That's why I am teaching you what is happening behind the scenes. Right? So what we have discussed today so far, we have just started discussing about strings in Java. So what is a string? String is a sequence of character enclosed with double quotes. Right? It is an available in the java.lang package. It is an inbuilt Java class. It is immutable in nature. Right? Immutable is nothing but non-changeable. Once the object is created, it is it cannot be modified. What is string buffer? String buffer is just opposite to string string buffer is mutable right and we have little bit we have understood about the difference between the double equal to operator and the equals method right tomorrow we will continue okay any questions